Hey guys, thanks for joining us for episode six of the Betfair Trading Show. Obviously, with me, your host Martin, and today he's back. He's back in town. He's back to see us, and it is Ryan Carruthers. Hi, Ryan. How are you? I'm good. Thank you very much. Thank you for allowing me to come back as well. Well, you know, it was one of those where we weren't too sure. Should we get Ryan back or should we stick with Adam? But uh, we went with Ryan in the end, I think mainly because Adam isn't that keen on doing these every week. Um, although I haven't actually asked him, he might be. Maybe we should alternate. Me. Yeah, yeah, it's not a bad yeah. idea. Because like, cause Adam's got a different view and a different sport, so maybe we should alternate it up a bit. Yeah, yeah, good idea. And so... As we start the show, um, the main question of the show today is going to be what skills do you think a Betfair trader needs? Um, we're going to dive into that in a bit. But guys, you guys listening, make sure you comment live and then we can respond to your comments. And also, what are your opinions? What do you think the skills are needed? But first off, as always, we're going to start, if you've got one, right? I haven't even spoken to Ryan about yeah, it. I've Have you got, got one. one? He's got, got one. one. He's got yeah, one. Got the big question, Ryan. I think, I don't know, we need a name for this topic. Maybe Ryan's random question. So yeah. here we are, Ryan, what is your random question today? So just to give a little bit of background on this as well, I do always have one because I have a list on this phone where I add them when I come up with them. So I've got loads, loads on, on here. I have loads, but my one today, and I'm torn between two right? I'm going to go with this one, is what would be your walk-on song if you was a professional darts player? Ooh. I know. So I don't... You you answer, because I'm going to need a second. No, I need a second, because I actually was thinking about a different question, and I've just seen that one on the list and thought, I want to use that one. So, There's so many great ones. I think, I think my favourite one, I wouldn't use this myself, obviously, my favourite one anyone used was Nazim Hamid, Prince Nazim Hamid, mm. using his one. Do you remember that one? His boxing yeah, walk-on. Yeah. I it's remember, like, nah, yeah. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. And the, the show he put on when he came to the ring, I love that guy. He's one of my favourite boxers just because of the show he put on before he came into the ring. Um, I met him once at Medawall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Look and where? he was Meadowhall. At, at Meadowhall. Yeah, what's Cause that? The, well, Meadowhall's a big shopping centre in Sheffield, right. and like it's just sort of on the outskirts of Sheffield. And obviously, being a Sheffield lad, he turned up in a massive limo. I mean, a massive limo, and just left it outside the door. <laughs> did his shopping and went. I saw him on a, on an old episode of Fantasy Football the other day. You never see him about on anything now, though, do you? Yeah. I'm surprised. You'd have thought he'd be the type. He'd be in TV all the time. He'd be I good think on it. So. But this is a mm. really tricky one for me because so I'm I don't really know. I'm going like back in black as well. ACDC is a tune. Like it's got that duh, da 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 good strong start but then or well, thunder thunderstruck yeah that would be a good one wouldn't it or something like because me you and martin and martin and adam all love the red hot chili peppers so would we go like would we go red hot chili peppers <laughs> da, 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 which one da, da, da. i don't know there's a lot of chilly songs. Because you could go give like... It away. Give it away. The thing with give it away is that's when everyone thinks of. Well, that or of... like... Depends on your era of the chilies though, doesn't it? Because some people will be like, by the way, or can't stop. That's what they'll... Suck my kiss would be the best one for an intro, I think. Yeah, I knew, you, I knew you were going to say that. Well, it's quite, a, it's quite a deep sort of song, isn't it? Hard-hitting one. A lot of their yeah. stuff is quite funky and slow, so I think it would be it would, you'd struggle with ring. I mean, I think Metallica for me would be one. I'd probably find something from Metallica. Maybe I'd disappear. I love that song from the Mission Impossible Two soundtrack. Um, or Enter Enter Sandman again would be a good one, but it's too obvious. Like everyone uses yeah. that. Actually, if you get a chance, 
Um, because you're into American football, Ryan. I think it's Virginia or Western Virginia. Anyway, one of them uses Enter Sandman as the intro to their when their players come out of the tunnel, and it is incredible. Go and watch the video on YouTube from this year, like the crowd and the opening yeah. home game. It was just insane. Um, yeah, I might actually watch that after this. It was pretty good. Just get you pumped difficult. up. Yeah. It's really hard because then I'm also leaning towards, you know, some sort of like my taste of music is so mental and eclectic. I'd be like, I'm also leaning towards like maybe some rap, like, like Lose DMZ. Yourself. Yeah. Or like, you know, remember the name, but then I'm also leaning towards like mental stuff like Rampstein. Ramstein would be good. Yeah. Well, they had a killer soundtrack on Vin Diesel did a film, Triple X, the very first one, which was good. And they were they were playing in that film and one of their songs. Well, that was album. On, I think I don't know what the album was called, but if it, it might have been called Mutter, but that album, the first one that became big over here, that was incredible. They had like four or five really good songs on there. Um, so I don't know what one I'd use. I'm trying to think what bands are. I mean, I listen to, I like um, Free Bird, Leonard Skinner, but that would, that starts really slow. So you'd have to, you kind of have to go into the song about halfway through to yeah. get to the best bit. Fleetwood Mac, The Chain, but then that's used on the F1, so that's already been used, but it's, it's perfect on that. Um I'm trying to think. I see. Oh, but then, as you know... can probably tell by listening to this, guys, <laughs> I don't listen to any modern music whatsoever. Um, but, it's all about the old school for me. I'm also thinking, do, but then do you go real old school, like really old school, like you run around town, da, 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 just to think that you're groovy. Da, 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 do you I don't just know what go... you're singing, Ryan. I think it's the four tops. Right. Do you go like Guns really N' Roses? Or... Guns N' Roses. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, but I feel like Sweet that, Child that of Mine. That is such a like... good shout, Donna. But I wouldn't go Sweet Child of Mine. I'd go for either Paradise City. Yeah, I'd go Paradise City. Or Welcome to no, but Welcome to the Jungle has been a problem with Sweet Child of Mine. Is it's a great song, but it's so used, isn't it? Yeah, it's like the same problem with Give It Away now with Red Hot Chili Peppers. Like, I'd be tempted to go song. really, like, really, really rogue though, because I think it depends on what you're trying to do to your opponent as well. Like, you could you could go really proper rogue and have like Carly Ray Jepsen call me maybe just to take the absolute mick and try and psych out your opponent. Yeah, like, are I'd you gonna? Are we? Are you doing it to <laughs> I'd avoid that? Are you doing it to psych yourself up or are you gonna do it to psych out <laughs> your opponent? I promise when you ask me about my week in trading, it's better than this. There's a few Kasabian ones that I could, you could use. I like, they're really good at songs, I think. Kasabian. Fire. I used to use the song Fire by Kasabian oh, yeah. to pump me up before tennis matches. <laughs> like when I was getting into a big match. Yeah, because it just gets you on, and I'm on fire, and you you start to believe in yourself, you know, even when you know you probably shouldn't. You're going to face someone that's likely to batter you, um, so it's always good, I think. Oh, I'll tell you another one: Linkin Park and oh, Jay Z. Yeah, yeah that yeah. album that they did yeah. is that would be incredible. I mean, you know, a lot of Linkin Park <laughs> stuff would be good for intros. Um, let's get some that's comments cool. anyway. Malcolm, did you say Australia will hold Denmark to a draw? Did you say that, Ryan? I don't remember saying that. <laughs> I haven't said that. I remember I think, we've backed Denmark. Yeah, I, I've been a bit disappointed with Denmark, to be honest. I think uh, yeah. I was expecting a bit more from them. And, uh, yeah, didn't, it hasn't really come to fruition, that one. Netherlands um, has, though. Yeah, Netherlands did well. They were just Never gifted in strong. that group, weren't they? They were, and they've got they've now got USA, which you know you'd be. So really, their path to the quarterfinals was always fairly easy. Doesn't mean they're going to get there. You just don't know. But yeah, that was always a good shout, really. That one. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, I, I I wouldn't be surprised if that game was a draw, particularly to be honest. 
Tim says hi. <coughs> hi, Tim. Good to hear you. Well, see your see your comment. Um, uh, what's your thoughts on songs to enter the boxing ring? Patience, Giorgio. Uh, I think Giorgio is commenting the skills that it takes to make a great trader. But wouldn't it be better if he was saying he wanted to take that patience? As yeah. The intro song? yeah, yeah, yeah. Just good. have a little patience. Well, we'll come back to that. <laughs> God, we'll come back to that, Giorgio. <laughs> I didn't know. I know why Ryan's picked this now. He fancies himself on the X Factor. Really. I am a terrible um, singer. I know that. <laughs> Alex Rendell, what was the horse racing dob service that you mentioned a while back in one of your videos? Oh, I don't know. Probably the betfairtradingcommunity.com one, I'd imagine. Yeah. Um, yeah, you want to go to betfairtradingcommunity.com for the horse racing dob stuff. I've actually been working on some dob strategies uh, yesterday. Uh, it's really good on the software as well because what Adam's done is he's made it so that you can literally look at any percentage of movement on the back mm. testing. So it's not just dob. You could look at a trob. You could look at a quab. I mean, is that a thing? Quadruple or bust? Uh, I mean, you could do that. You could look at 50% odds coming in 50%. It's really good, actually. Um, so I've been working on that. Uh, hopefully get some good strategies out of that. We've already got a really good one, actually, with John, uh, who's done really well on the dogs. Oh, and he also, yeah. he also shares his trobs every day, and they've been profitable for years. It's funny because we get some people, and they, they go through the horse racing software, and they're like, oh, I'm a bit confused how to use it. I've not really done horse racing before and stuff like that. And I think, well, just look at what John's doing with the trobs then because he literally shares quality, profitable selections um, each day. So, yeah. I Bet think though, just jumping in on that, and this is good advice for anybody, and you should do this with everything, is you should look at people's strategy and then try and pick it apart. So with John's Trob strategy, it's profitable. You can just use it. Great. But question, how did he get there? What kind of things was he thinking about? What's his goal with it? Because that will help you understand the strategy more. So there's a few things that can happen there, but the main one is if it goes through a bad run, you actually understand the strategy. So you understand why it's going through a, a bad patch. Cause I noticed John commented might've been yesterday in the forum and John, I know, I know that John's gone into game theory and all that kind of stuff, which is something that traders should look at. And he said, look, you're not going to win every trade in a thousand but you might win 370 and those 370 are going to pay for everything and they're going to give you this amount of profit and da, 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 da. and when you know that and you understand the strategy it makes the variance so much easier to understand i think that traders have got to do a little bit more work in understanding why someone is doing that strategy and sort of picking it apart a little bit yeah definitely and uh, i think that's the key as well ask ask things you know if you get stuck or if you get confused just ask yeah. things and we can help you um so yeah betfairtrainingcommunity.com for that it's funny because and i've said that a few times now but i've had a few messages recently on my videos and people are like i'm doing a software strategy from our site and people go are commenting going what website is this you know what site do you use and i'm like i realize i don't actually say uh, the site very often because I just obviously assume that everyone knows and also a lot of the time it's in the search bar on the actual video itself so you can actually see but yeah um, just in case you're in any doubt that's what I use for horse racing walking in a Taylor Wonderland what's that Ryan stumped not a clue. I don't know what that Malcolm you always every week <laughs> you, you throw a spanner in the works to to get us didn't have to think um I don't know what that is maybe well here we go by the way yeah I was thinking by the way that's a good song yeah. a good choice Georgia it's one of so my favorite albums again, ever that you'd have to get it a little bit in so that you got to that bit where it just uh, which, so which bit now, I don't want to do it again because it's not very good, but the actual... No, you, know, you was good. Go on. In, getting into it. No, no. I'm not doing that again. Oh, Run to the it, Hills. That's a tune. Classic. What and I'm realising Probably the only well, Iron Maiden song I know. A lot of our, a lot of the guys that watch this 
are very we're all very very similar aren't we like we all have similar tastes in sport in music yeah maybe that's a trader trait if you're into that sort of music you'll be a good trader yeah. if you're into you know more modern stuff might be difficult well, I'm great singing modern. x factor next year ryan i think that's for you because you were the one singing early on nope nope um, nope not happening i don't think there is x factor anymore then they shut that down finally thank god don't know awful show it was all right at the start but it's like um it's like i'm a celebrity i can't stick that because it's just yeah, gone on for too long and it's the same thing every year it's like literally the same thing and uh a bunch of people that to be honest most of them you wouldn't even cross the street to say hello to yeah i know, you know these amazing celebrities Matt Hancock, Jesus. <laughs> um, I think we need a draw to advance. I'm being hopeful. Well, I haven't been impressed by Denmark. I don't think Australia are a bad team. Um, they just don't have a ton of players that people know about, you know, over here in the UK. But, you know, the one thing you always get with Australians, they're going to give it their all, right? You know, you know that they're going to give it their all on the field. And I think a draw is possible, definitely. I think um, also one of the big news is, that's come out recently is that Neighbours is coming back. I were talking yes. about Australia. I can't. Although wait. It's, it's not, it's not coming back in the traditional sense, is it? Well, I thought it said the new series was going to come back next year, like towards the I end think of next so, year. Apparently, it's going to be like some old ones, but then the odd new one. I don't really understand it. I don't think it's going to be like a, a regular. It might just maybe be one thing. episode a week. One a week's fine. We need like we need a bit. I, of... I haven't watched Neighbours in years. Oh man, you've got to watch. Oh, it's great. It's probably better than EastEnders that Roz makes me watch all the time. Definitely. Like, and if you if anyone did watch Neighbours recently, right? Roxy. Wow. Well, they get a lot of Hollywood stars from Neighbours, don't they? Margot Margot Robbie. Wow. Old uh, was Hope Hugh Jackman in it and Russell Crowe. I think all of them have been in it pretty much. Crazy, isn't it? Um, fancy free draws today. Hi, Tom Jones. Fancy free draws today. I'd love it if it was, if it was the Welsh Tom Jones. Yeah, I mean, I was. But about he's not a Wolves say... fan. He's not a yeah. Wolves fan, so I think it's unlikely. It's not um, unusual, lever, is it? Oh, here we go. Ah! Here we go. Did you see that show the other day with? Uh, it's called Animals or something. And it's got James Corden in it. It's like a Amazon series oh, it's just come I, out. I saw it advertised, right? And in one, I just I only saw this on Gogglebox. I haven't actually watched the show, but on one scene, he turns round and Tom Jones is just sitting on the beach in a deck chair. What? How random is that? I mean, I love Tom Jones. I don't legend. like James Corden though. Both of them, not this, the Welsh one, and this guy. Okay, fancy three draws today, excluding the France game. So let's have a look. Australia, Denmark, yeah, could be a draw. Poland, Argentina, yeah, I could see that. Saudi Arabia, Mexico, could see that as well. Mexico being disappointing. I, yeah, I love Mexico, but you know I've been there a couple of well, a couple of times, I think at least. And it's, they're mad about their football. I always I always think I don't understand why Mexico don't achieve more in football really because they are crazy about their football huge country loads of people um but like a lot of south america obviously they're in central america but it's literally you know next to south america i don't understand why they're not more successful because those south american teams have all had seemingly a lot more success really um can you remember you know, carlos fierro as well the old football manager legend back in the day from mexico I think it might Carlos have been like Fiera. no, I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, I think it might have been football manager f- 2015, maybe. He was like a 17-year-old kid. He was a striker. You mean Baylor? No. No, because he, he was good as well. But no. Chicorito. Was... Char Chicorito. Still banging him in, in the MLS, is he? I think so, yeah. I don't I don't follow the MLS closely, to be honest. Um, yeah, I could see them being draws. Poland, I mean, they're actually good games. Poland, Argentina will be a good game. Yeah, Poland um, are decent, I think. It's hard, it's, it is, it's hard with these games that are on at the same time because you're kind of not sure what to watch, eh? Like, 
I mean, Tunisia, France, I'm sure that'll be the one most people are covering. But really, I think the game that's interesting is Australia, Denmark, because mm. France are through. They're going to beat Tunisia probably. Well, Australia, Denmark's a massive game for second place. Um, it's like yesterday, once England went the goal up, oh, you know, yeah. really, the other game was the only one that mattered. Um, well, not that I switched over, but um, yeah, I could see the free draws there easily. Um, okay, let's keep going. Malcolm is going to get us again here. Oh, it was the it was dark, a dark song. But why would you use that as your intro? Unless I've got an idea. Instead of the girls who bring you on in boxing, you could have Phil Taylor walk you on. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Does he I still does he still play, by the way? I don't I know. Don't... Does he still play darts? I haven't Is seen he still him. in it. I don't really watch I've... darts. What? Oh man. It's I love it, but of... oh, yeah. it's just never there's always something else on, or I'm doing something else when it's on. Yeah, uh, um, no, no. It's the highlight of your year. Well, yeah, you know, Ali Pali, Boxing Day and onwards. Me and the wife love it, watching the darts, yeah. Yeah, with old Blanco. Barney. Was it Blanco, Ryan, from Mexico? No, I'm defo. It was Carlos Fierro, defo. Poland are solid. I think Mexico will save Argentina today. Um, I'd like to see Mexico win. That would be good. He retired. He's filled the power to. Yeah, he's retired. Phil the power Taylor. So there you go. Is it Van Gerwen still the best? One oh, there? Michael Van Gerwen's wicked. Yeah, but there's he doesn't a... win it very much, does he? Not he hasn't won them. many. There's a there's a young lad as well, Smith. I think his surname is, and he's like bottled finals, loads and loads, and loads. He's just won his first one recently. He's good. And yeah. Gerwig Price is like an ex-rugby league player. He's a unit, and now he's a professional darts player. Price is number one. Oh, yes. I like How Gerwig. many has he won? Malcolm, how many has Van Gerwen won? Yeah, Price is number one. I like him. And he has I'd won like... it three times. I'd only thought he'd won it twice. I like Gary Anderson myself. I love Gary. And Peter Snakebite Wright. <laughs> He comes on to da 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 I like the, the uh, I like the old ones. I like the old ones. They look like gangsters. Like who was the yeah. uh, who was that? Was it the Count or something like that? The one who was, like, used to be on a BBC coverage with it. He looked like um, Frank Butcher from EastEnders. You know, <laughs> he always had the yeah. gold chains and he was brilliant. And he sounded, you know, like that. Oh, great stuff. Um, yeah, okay, let's let's shall we get on with the question, Ryan? Yes. I think it's about it. time. I think you're we've, we've rambled on long enough. Um Yeah, you better not ramble because you'll get in trouble. I always get in trouble for rambling. Yeah, I know. I like to ramble though. Um but anyway, so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask this so hand this over to you first, Ryan. Um and I'll see what's interesting, I think, is gonna be see which ones you have on your list that I also have on mine. Yeah. So what skills or what traits does a good Betfair trader need? Someone who's likely to succeed in the profession of Betfair trading. So I think first and foremost, you have to be open-minded. I think you have to be open-minded because if you come into this with that closed-minded attitude of, I'm, and I did a video about this yesterday, chasing winners, then I don't think you're going to do very well. I think you've got to switch that around instantly and you've got to you've got to be open minded to this um and that also then falls into being open minded with your strategy your first strategy might not work but if you've done the required steps with that strategy if you've you know you've got the data that you can analyze you're probably going to find a strategy from all that data um, i don't actually think that people's strategies fail i think they just don't give them long enough or they don't track enough data around them um, and that goes back to what i said earlier about unpicking why you're doing a strategy and the goal of that strategy it gives you that, that information so i think the first thing you need is you definitely need to be open-minded open-minded to change and that you're not going to smash this straight away and that 
you aren't chasing winners. You need to focus on the long term, which then I think you also need patience. You have got to, got to have patience in this game. You wouldn't go surfing or go and play golf and after one round or one failed wave, just give up if you loved it, if you wanted to get better at it, because that's not how life works. We don't instantly get good at things straight away. It's just life. We have to put the work in. Trading is no different. you know. And from a young age, we have been told money is precious. Don't lose it. Protect it. Protect it. And trading goes against everything that you've learned as a kid. You know, you are using money, you are risking money, which you've told has been precious, to gain more money in a very, very quick way. Whereas, you know, if you're making another investment, you're investing in a building or other things, then it's it can be longer. But if you're putting a hundred pound on a football match now, that is instant your result could be. You know, you're gonna know within the next two hours whether that's worked out or not. So I think you need patience for many, many other things. And I think you need to also be quite self-aware because, and I don't think enough traders do this. They don't look at themselves. They just create a new plan. They don't look at their own behavior around that plan. You know, I create this plan. Oh, that plan didn't work. So I'm going to create a new plan. But actually, if you were more self-aware and you actually looked at your actions with that plan, most of the time you didn't follow that. You didn't do that plan. You're not changing your behavior to match the plan. You're blaming the plan and now creating a new one. And I don't think that's right. So you need to be self-aware to that. You also just need to be self-aware to all of all of you and your life and your beliefs and how you can trade and how you think about trading. You know, so I saw it on the community today. A guy said, Oh, I can only trade at the weekend though. Does that mean I can? St- yeah, it does. Actually, that puts you at an advantage because you're quite self-aware of when you can actually do this. You know, so many traders I speak to come in and go, "Oh, I'm going to trade the horse racing." Okay, but I work Monday to Friday. Oh, do you work in a job that allows you to get to the computer? No, but I'm going to learn to be a scalper. Why? So I can go pro. Why? Like you're not self-aware enough about yourself, you, your surroundings. You don't, there's a million ways to skin the cat with trading. You could build a set and forget strategy. You could go into the football. You could do tennis. You don't just have to do scalping because somebody on YouTube said do scalping. You need to be way more self-aware around that. I'm trying to think as well now because a lot of mine, that covers a lot of stuff, doesn't it? You know, well, do you want to throw it back to me and then we'll see yeah. if you get anything else? Yeah. Um, so for me, the number <laughs> one thing is a willingness to learn. Yeah. Um, and I feel I did a I did a podcast on this yesterday, actually. So I'm going to use a different analogy of this today. But one of the things we found on BetfairTrainingCommunity.com that we sh- we struggle with with members is that we can we can give you the training videos. And what we find is that either people don't watch them or when people watch them, they just move on to the next one and keep watching video after video without putting anything into practice. And then at the end of it, their head's fried and they're going, well, I I can't even remember what I'm supposed to do now because I haven't actually practiced learning how to trade. So for me, I think this is actually probably the number one thing that I've noticed with traders who have success is that they've got this great willingness to learn, but also they understand that they don't expect to learn everything in a day. So I'm going to use an analogy for this to kind of explain why, just how ridiculous it would be if you thought that was the case. Let's imagine, as most of us did when we were kids, we wanted to be footballers, right? We wanted to be professional footballers growing up. What a great life, what a great lifestyle, what a great amount of money to earn, you know, all the adulation you get. Now, How would you go about that? Well, one of the first things you could do is you could watch a video on YouTube. You could watch a YouTube video on how to learn to play football, right? And you could could watch that video. But imagine if at the end of that video, you just kept watching YouTube videos and you went, hang on. And then you went and played football and you went, oh, hang on. I've just played football. I've watched all these videos, but I'm not a pro footballer. What's (laughs) going on? 
you know, yeah. because every, anyone would understand how crazy that thought would be, right? How crazy would you have to be to think that you can just watch a video, you don't put anything into practice, you don't do any training in between the videos, you don't properly learn it. Because learning isn't just about what you watch. You know, there's all, there's, you're always taught, aren't you? There's three different ways of learning isn't that so one of them is you visually learn by watching so you, you learn by watching but another one is you learn by doing okay and one of the bigger ones for me is i have to do something myself to learn it so you know if i was doing a football watching video to learn this skill i'd want to then go straight out and practice it but it's insane for someone to think that they could just watch a video and then become a professional footballer like that it just doesn't make any sense so why is it that when people want to trade, they feel that the same way, like they can just watch a video and instantly they've learned how to trade? A willingness to learn isn't just a case of going, yeah, I'm going to sit at a computer and watch a video and I want to learn. A willingness to learn is actually having the understanding that something will take time to learn. You know, you've got to learn the rules. I mean, you know, if you're learning how to use a software, for example, or even if you're just learning how to trade on Betfair and you've never learned that before, your first thing you've got to do is learn the rules, right? Learn how to do it. And it's like if you had a board game, you, you have to sit there sometimes at the start, don't you? And you have to learn the rules. You have to learn. And it's not the task anyone particularly wants to do. I don't want to sit there and read the rules of Monopoly if I've never played it before to get a grasp of it. Well, the reality is, if you don't do that, you won't learn it. But the beauty is, and this is the beauty of Betfair trading, once you do actually learn it, once you do have those breakthroughs, once you have put the real effort in, once you have asked people when you've got stuck, once you have put it into practice and learned how to do it as well as watching videos, you don't unlearn it, right? It's a skill you learn that is so valuable to you. you you're able to create your own wealth, your own income. But also it's a huge, huge skill for actually not losing that skill. It's something that will stick with you for life. You know, I'm, I've been using it every day for years and years. And I don't ever go, oh, hang on a minute. How do I use the software again? No, I've got it. Once you've learned it, you've learned it. So and it's like the same with Betfair trading. There's always going to be a learning curve. But in general, in life, anything that's worth doing, there's always a learning curve. So don't be put off by the fact that you might actually have to bother to learn something. Um, because once you have learned it, it's a great skill to have for life. And I feel like that's something that a lot of people, a lot of people kind of come in, even come into BetfairTrainingCommunity.com and just think, well, it's OK. What I'll do is I'll just get tips from someone else. I'll just get advice from someone else. And I'll never have to actually do anything myself, but what will happen is I'll become an expert trader. Well, we know that that doesn't work for the same reason that tipsters don't work. Because at the end of the day, if someone's just feeding you a tip or a selection, you haven't learned anything from that. You haven't learned anything about trading. And so the day that they don't feed you that tip, you're back to square one. Mm. you know or the day they probably worse than square one actually because you've actually you yeah. if you've been following a tipster that's done really really well you will have built your life around that income yeah and that's the thing and the other thing is what if they have a bad day i always think that i'm never comfortable following tipsters because i always think well hey they never work long term so when the reason is and i'll tell you the reason they don't work long term if tipsters work long term no one would bother to learn, right? Yeah. If you think about it, no one would bother to learn trading because you go, well, that's all right. I can just get selection and I don't need to bother to do anything. The reality is there's so many downsides to it and that's the reason they don't work long term. And what will happen and what I've seen happen, even in the 10 years we've been doing Betfair Trading Community, I've seen a lot of tipsters come in, all guns blazing. Oh, we're the best thing since sliced bread. People start to buy into it. A few months later, they're gone. What happened? Oh, they had a bad run. Oh, they fell out with their girlfriend. Oh, X, Y, and Z. You know, they lost interest. All these kinds of different things. And then the people come to me and they go, oh, Martin, I'm really gutted because this happened to me and I lost a lot of money or whatever. And I'm like, that's sad. But, you know, I've been saying for 10 years, this is a waste of time, essentially, long term. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think if you don't have a passion, this is the thing. I had a guy the other day. I think this is another trait you need to have. 
You need to have a passion for Betfair trading. Mm. You need to have a want to get good at it. You need to have a real desire to get good at Betfair trading and make money from it. Because it's easy to say you have that, but do you actually? Because only you can know that deep down, whether you have that passion. And I see a lot of people. I mean, I, a guy the other day he came in uh, to Betfair trading community and he was talking a lot. I was emailing him and, you know, I've probably spent a few hours talking to him in a few days. And he was saying he wasn't even sure he actually wanted to do Betfair trading. He wasn't sure that, you know, he should be using Betfair. And I was kind of a bit stumped by that because I was like, well, what are you doing then? You know, I didn't say that. But then ultimately, inevitably, he was he was someone who ended up in the end. He just he didn't want to do it. And I just and he said, oh, maybe I'll maybe I'll be back one day. And I, I kind of said to him, look, you know, I didn't say it in his cutthroat term, but I, I kind of said in a nice way, don't bother. <laughs> right. Because unless you've got that interest, that passion, that fire for Betfair trading, it's never going to be anything more than just a side hobby. That's the reality. You know, you've got to have a fire for it. And this is the thing about Betfair trading. To me, it's the best game in the world. It's the most fun game in the world. And I love the fact you can just invest your money in sports and actually get a return. And like you say, Ryan, one of the big advantages of Betfair trading is that you can get a return in two hours. Yep. I mean, crikey, I put some of my money in savings. I'm lucky if I get a 1% return in a year these days. You know, the, the fact you can actually get your return on investment within an hour, two hours is it's insane, really. But that's where the opportunity comes from. But you've got to you've got to have that fire and that passion for it. Otherwise, I think you're always going to end up being a bit in and out, a bit on and off. You know, like one of those on off relationships. They really wind me up when people just keep breaking up and oh, then getting man. back together. But it's this like, time it'll be different. Yeah, no, it's it like. That's what will end up happening with you and your trading because you haven't really got that passion or fire for it. Um, and I realize that I'm probably speaking to a lot of the converted here anyway uh, in this video. But just in case there are people watching who aren't sure and are on the fence, then kind of work out what's inside you. Like, what do you feel about it? How do you do? You, is this something you want? Um, and if it is, then I think you've got a much better chance. And again, the people who've had success. This is where I base all this stuff from. I, I'm not just saying an opinion that I've made up. I look at the people who've had success on BetfairTradingCommunity.com. I look at the people that have turned pro. You know, the amount of people that have gone from unprofitable to profitable in those 10 years, it's just, I mean, it's hundreds. It must be thousands now. And the thing is, it's a case of actually looking at what they're doing. And they're all doing those same behaviors. They're willing to learn. They're willing to ask questions. This is another one ask questions. If you get stuck, ask questions, get help. I mean, you've got me, Ryan and Adam to work with. Don't just moan and go, oh, it's too hard or I, I, I'm struggling to learn. Come and ask questions. Come and get help. That's how you actually solve. And again, all the people that have success, what do they do? They engage, they interact, they get help. They don't just sit there looking at the forum and looking at other posts and not contribute and get involved and ask for help themselves. Because otherwise, you know, sometimes I feel like some people, Ryan, I don't know if you feel this way, they think we can magically know what's going on with them. Oh, so it's like yeah. you get someone, it's like, oh, you know, I've had, I've had a few months and I, I've been losing money for months and this hasn't been working. And I have to kind of bite my tongue and not say, well, A, why the hell have you been carrying on with it and not, you know, but B, why haven't you come and got help earlier? Yeah. Why would you wait? till that point where you're actually ready to give up mm. to seek help. That's insane. Like, if you look at people who are successful in life, what do they do? They surround themselves with other people in their field who are successful, right? Look at celebrities. How many celebrities are all just mates with each other? It's not just because of the fact that, well, you know, they just think it would be nice to have a celebrity as a friend. It's because they know it protects them because, oh, I'm going to have I'm going to have access now. I'm going to have yep. social access. I'm going to get access to more opportunities in this world of, you know, the celebrity world that I, that I make my living in. Let's remember they they make their living from that world. It's the same in Betfair trading. If it helps me to talk to people like Ryan and Adam because they're professional traders. It doesn't matter how successful I've been as a trader. The fact is you surround yourself with more and more successful traders, you're going to have more success. And again, that's another trait 
of the traders who do well at Betfair trading. So that's kind of it for me. I mean, there's there's probably like a few more, but I feel yeah. like, you know, that's quite a few things. Is there anything else you have, Ryan? Well, no, I agree with all of those. I'd just like to ask you a follow-up question uh, because on, you've been trading a long time. I've been trading a long that's time. Oh, Jesus. I started at 18 and I'm 34 now. That I is... started at 16 when you yeah. could actually still get on Betfair because you could oh, use geez. debit cards and you didn't have to. There's no such thing as like, K... what is it called? KYI or something? Oh, uh, KYC. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, KYC. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, there's no such thing as that back in the day. So my question for you then is, because you mentioned about passion and I completely agree. I remember when I found out about Betfair, I literally stopped what I was doing. I ran to the bus stop, jumped on the bus, got home and went mental for Betfair. That passion hasn't ever dwindled for me. So how do you keep the passion for Betfair trading? I think I think for me, a part of it is when you have a bad day, knowing how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So when I have a bad day, if I'm really wound up or frustrated, I will just turn everything off and I'll go do something different. And what I'll find is that because I do that, I'm not burning myself out too much that by the next day, I will be fired up and ready to come and have another go. And I feel like the people that get burnt out on it or get really fed up of it, they're almost do they're not taking breaks a lot of them. When I ask people, they're like, oh yeah, well, I've, I've been doing it every day and you know, stuff like this. And, and I'm like, well, how do you react to a bad day? I react really badly. I start putting loads more money on and it's really costing me. And I think, well, why don't you just stop for a bit, take a day off, take a week off, take a month off. But if you find that you if you take some time off and you have no interest in getting back into it, then that's where there's no passion, right? But if you take a day off, if you take a week off and you're feeling like, okay, I'm ready to go again. I want to see what opportunities pop up. I want to see what matches pop up on my software today, you know, what what strategies I've created. And let's look at what selections I'm going to get from what I've created here. That's what I get joy out of. I think... The software on betfairtradingcommunity.com is what helps keep my passion burning because every day I want to see, right, which games have popped up, which games are going to beat the market today. It actually excites me to see matches using strategies that are profitable and go, I think that match is going to beat the market today. Um, you know, I mean, even not using software. So I'll give you an example from the other day where Qatar were playing um, Senegal, right? Qatar looked like a pub team in their first game of the World Cup. <laughs> they were awful. We know they are an awful, awful team, right? And the only reason they didn't really lose every game 5 or 6 nil is that I think people felt sorry for them. Once they got a few goals ahead, they just relaxed a bit. They didn't have to push for the win. Well, for the big win. Senegal were 1.68 to win against Qatar. You know, that you can look at that and I can look at a match like that and just go, wow. Oh, this match is going to beat the market today. I'm going to beat the market today because 1.68 is a joke. And the only reason I can assume it was that high is because people thought it might be a fix um, or people don't respect. And I have noticed actually on Betfair, people don't seem to respect the African nations enough. Mm. Um, you know, it's the same with Senegal and Ecuador and also the same with, um, was it Cameroon when they played Serbia? I mean, Serbia are odds on. And Serbia have never really done anything, let's be honest, in a World Cup. They barely ever qualified for it. Cameroon are quite a historic nation for football. Um, and I think Serbia should do better than they do. and They should improve in, uh, in the coming years. But odds on was ridiculous. And uh, the, the great thing in that much, and one of the reasons I love Betfair trading, this kind of links back to the fire, Ryan. Mm. In that match, Cameroon went 1-0 up. If you'd back Cameroon, you could have taken a massive green. Serbia then went 3-1 up. If you'd back Serbia, you could have taken a massive green. Yeah. It ended 3 all. If you'd back the draw, you would have made a massive profit. Yeah. Any outcome you backed in that match would have made you money. That's the beauty of Betfair trading. You should good never point. lose sight of that. Never. Mm. That's a really good point. And that's really it for me, I think, for that. Mm, I like it. I like hearing about that, about the fire and how you still 
keep it burning. Because for me, it's just a game. For me, it's a game. I see Betfair trading as a game, and I have to master the game. I have a really obsessive personality. You know that. My wife definitely yeah. knows that. I <laughs> I am obsessed. I'm still obsessed with it. I think part of it is that it's a game, and I've got to master that. Very much like you, I love the fact that I go into the stat software every day. I've done it today, and I've got a game in China. And it's like, great. And I know that that game works. And I know that it's going to, the long term, that is going to make me money. And then that feeds into the other half for me is if you'd have told 11-year-old Ryan or 12-year-old Ryan he would make good money from watching sport all day and then talking to the kind of people that we have inside of the forum on Betfair Training Community, I would have snapped your hand off. I would have snapped your hand off and ran with it because I'm I'm obsessed. I love sport. Sport is always on in my house, always. And that can be any type of sport. The kind of sport that we watch does loads. Cycling, swimming, athletics, football, tennis, horse racing, everything. We watch everything in this house. So... Yeah, for me, I just, I love sport first and foremost. And then it's just a game. I've got to beat it. I've got to beat the game. I've got, and, and like you, I can't, and then that links back to what you said earlier about once, once you've learned that skill, you're never going to unlearn it. So I looked at the Netherlands game. It's like Netherlands yesterday. They're one, they're 1.23, right? Like that's that's short, and I don't advise backing that. But they realistically should have been way, way shorter than that. Way shorter than that. It's like so you never lose that skill to be able to assess whether something is value or not. So then I let that game go and play a little bit, and then decided I was going to lay the draw. Oh, nice! You never lose that skill to be able to evaluate and spot value once you know how yeah you and your lay the draw i um, love lay the draw ted hankey is not do you know what this isn't actually the darts player i was thinking of andrew and i realize he is the count so it's not the count who's the guy i was thinking of he's got he wore all the like jewelry he's a bbc pundit he sounded like frank butcher he looked a bit like frank butcher. i know the guy a little bit slimmer man. yeah Barry, Barry, six, maybe something like that's coming to mind. I don't know, but he was he was great. What a character. Um, come on, Malcolm. Come on, Andrew. You can help me out here. Um, Malcolm says... Oh, it's not it's taking ages to come up. Wait right, a sec. I Finn found a hack for Australians to try, trade live. Well, if you want to learn to trade live and you're in Australia, have a look at that comment. I'm not going to try and read it, Malcolm. Put some commas and full stops in. <laughs> Made perfect um, sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> anyone know? If anyone doesn't know, Ryan uh, probably has the worst grammar of anyone living. Uh, in <laughs> Australia, a couple of weeks back, could only access some light version of Betfair. <laughs> yeah, it must be annoying not being able to trade live. Um, Tom says discipline. It's huge. Yep, agree with that. Jonathan Batten says, teaching at school will earn you a living, but teaching yourself will earn you a fortune. That is an amazing quote. Really true. Jonathan's Um, banging some quotes out and some comments on these videos as well, I see. Jonathan. Yeah. Well, Giorgio as well. Every week. Yeah, Giorgio. Giorgio's got one there. Really true, Martin. Do the same myself when it's a bad day, switching off. Um, And I think that's the key. So many people, when you're in that bad mood, you don't want to switch it off. It's like the time you least want to switch it off, but you also know it's the time you should do it. So just do it. Because the thing is, there's so many other things to do when you're in that mood. Like, just turn it off. Go away from your phone if you use your phone for trading and go watch TV, watch a show. You know, watch. I've been watching Columbo. Go and watch Columbo. That's what I say. Um, I know that's random, right? Yeah. 
but that's there. the that's the that's the key about this. It's about pattern interruption. You need something to interrupt the current pattern that you're doing. So if you're really, really struggling, you need to read the book Tiny Habits. Tiny Habits is a really, really good book to read. Yeah, I'll look that one up. Um, Mike really Miro good. says, a simple fact is that some people have a profitable selection process. However, they're just simply unable to accept that losses have to occur. Then they just give up. That's right. So no trader is ever going to not have losses or ever not going to have bad days, even if they're a really profitable one. Too many people lose sight of that with trading. And uh, it doesn't help that you get some nonsense online where people go, oh, this strategy never loses and things like that, which oh. is total Billy Veloxios. Um, OK, Ged Brown, you've got it. You're the winner. I mean, there's no prize, but you're the winner. It is Bobby George. Bobby George is the darts player that I was thinking of. I want to put that in on my phone now and have a little look at him. Oh, what a legend Bobby George is. Bobby um, George. Yeah, you've got to look him up, Ryan. You'll love him. Honestly. Oh, he's got yeah. here. He's got like four bracelets on. Four oh, big yeah. gold rings. Look at him. With dice on. Oh, I love it. I bet he plays poker, you know. I bet that guy plays. I bet he, he bets. I bet he bets on that player. I um, bet he does. Well, <laughs> you know, um, David Dunn, the ex Blackburn midfielder. Yeah. Pro bet fair trader now. Is he? Yeah. There you go then. David. Oh, have I never heard that? Don't know. Um, I'll look that up. There you go. There's some homework. David Dunn. Have you noticed a day or time where you make more profit? Um, yes, yeah, so for some reason, Sunday is my most profitable day of the week by far. Uh, for some reason, I just think it's the leagues that play on a Sunday. Like you get a lot of Swiss games, Belgian games, and obviously I go for goals a lot of the time. Um, Saturday seems to be a difficult day for me for some reason, especially the 3 p.m. kickoffs. And then during the week, it just depends. Really. I mean, the problem during the week is with football, obviously, Tuesday and Wednesday, sometimes you have really good cards. But if there's Champions League on, Tuesday and Wednesday aren't always great days for trading. And then Monday and Thursday are pretty slow. Obviously, Friday can be pretty decent. But yeah, Sunday. Uh, so yeah, time of day, um, it doesn't matter too much. Although I find sometimes the later evening games, like the really late games on a weekend, aren't particularly good times for me. Um, you know, I can get some bad. But again, it might just be the leagues. Maybe those South American leagues are quite unpredictable, which uh, is very true. Um, but yeah, have you noticed anything, Ryan? No, I haven't. I mean, I, only thing is, like yourself, the Saturday 3 p.m. kickoffs are pretty terrible. For me, I, I, in fact, I very rarely touch them unless it's sort of semi-automated now, um, and it's in a strategy that I've tested. But in terms of anything else, then no. I know that I like I like tennis when it's on in the morning, and because the morning for me, you know, sort of anywhere from sort of half seven, eight to sort of probably about now is my that's my time when I am most firing. So I like the tennis when it's on that time. But yeah, that's sort of it for me. Yeah, that's good. Um, Tom Jones, if you can't accept losses, you'll never win long term. Very true. And then we're going to round it off with Beach Games TV, who likes the answer we give him about the matches, when or times to trade. All right, guys. So we'll call it there because we've got a meeting to attend, me, Ryan, and Adam now. Uh, where yeah. we discuss how we can best improve betfairtradingcommunity.com each week. Um, thanks for being back, Ryan. Thank you for having me. That's no problem. We're glad to have you back. And uh, everyone else, I hope you've enjoyed the interaction. I hope you have a great week. And most importantly, I hope you make some money trading on Betfair this week. See you next week.